Hello there everybody, guys and gals, it's Shiny Sparky 14 and welcome to part 3 of the Acorn Tutorial Series. So last time, well, you know, we did talk about a couple more things, but this time around we have even more complicated things to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact dimensions, just for the sake of these tutorials, you know. Make this a bit bigger, I don't know why, but I usually like making this a little bit bigger. Not sure why. So there we go. This time around though we are going to, well, we're going to start with the shape, just to give you a good example. So there's that. Now, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the gradient tool. The gradient tool is actually really cool for making various features in tutorial, you know, ver various, various few uh, features that are helpful. When you click on the gradient tool, which is this right here, what's going to come up is this over here. Now. This over here has various different things that you can do, you know, but you really don't have to pick one of these. First off, you can make your own gradient, but really what you can do is actually come on over here and you can click wherever you want and it'll make new colors for you. So that way you can combine different forms of color. For example, you can double click on any color, let's say green here, then you can double click on this one, let's say magenta here. See that? It's a really good way to, you know, make a really good gradient of multiple colors like that. If you think you have too many, you can go ahead and click on any gradient and just drag it to the end until it shows that little cloud symbol or paper ball. I don't know what that is. I'm pretty sure it's a paper ball to assume trashed, but yeah. Move it wherever you want and there you go. Now, um, and again, you can change the colors like I said, so we're going to go ahead and give it a try. Once you select whatever you want, select the right layer, in this case, that square or rectangle, and drag it. Oh, I didn't select a layer once again. You have to click on it. Oh, no, no. You have to click on it, click the gradient tool, and then drag it. Here's what's going to happen, you know. Um, you can always adjust it here closer or further to make it look more gradient. Better gradient way, I should say. You can also hold down the shift key. If you hold down the shift key, it'll be basically 45 degree angle, so you can aim it however you want to, which is a really good thing. Let's say you want to do that, and there's your gradient. Now, it's not a very good place gradient, but, you know, it works for now. That's pretty much how the gradient works, and again, you can always keep editing it. You can, let's say, for example, come over here, change this to green, and now you can see it's three colors, blue, green, and white, and that's kind of how it goes. You can also go to, well, actually, I should show that. Once you are done, you can go ahead and click the plus and it'll make it a, a new gradient, which is really good. You know, you can have your custom gradient always there whenever you want. If you're going to do it, use it in the future for multiple shapes and stuff like that, you know. And there are different ones. For example, there's this one, you know, circle. You can always adjust however you want. Things like that, you know. You get the idea of how it works. So that's pretty much it. Anyways, when we're done with the whole gradient part. Let's go ahead and do the next thing. Which are filters. For filters, I'm going to once again make another shape. I'll just hold down to make it a perfect square. For filters, you want to go ahead and click on it. And you want to go up here to filter. And there are a huge amount of filters. I'm going to go to stylize and let's say uh, crystallize. How about that? Okay, you know, it's, you can kind of see what it does. For filters, you want to pay attention to this over here. Layer filters. It'll show crystallize. That's the only filter you have applied. You can always fix each filter. The, the options depend on which filter you choose. You know, for example, this one has a whole radius thing. As you can see, this one is kind of making it bigger chunks or smaller parts like this. See that? You get the idea. This one only has one good option. Other, but if we keep going to, let's say, stylize and give it a bloom. Okay, that gives it kind of a little blur on the outside. And this one has a radius and an intensity. I'm not going to go over every single filter because there's just way too many, you know. Every single menu has, that's just way too much time in the video. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and give it a gloom. That just gave it a very slight blur, but it's kind of overshadowed by bloom in the way, so. I'll come over here and give it a, let's say, a drop shadow. Okay, you can't, you can't really tell because, you know, well, kind of just stacking them the same way. Now, to delete them, you simply press the X button. Now, this is a common mistake that a lot of people have, you know, let's say they work on this and then they save it and they reopen the image. Obviously, you can't undo it because, you know, programs aren't meant to be like that. Once you save it, you can't come up here to edit, undo a filter. So then they're like, oh, that means I have to delete the shape to start over because I already applied a filter I don't like. That's not true. 
What you can do is come over here and you can click on the X of any filter you want. For example, click X on this. It will delete only that filter. You can press X on this. So, you know, it's really convenient and you do not have to delete the shape and start over, despite what many people think. That's pretty much how that works, filters. And again, you got to play around with it more. This is more of a custom thing rather than, you know, a tutorial. I just wanted to show you the tutorial effects of it, you know? But. I mean, the, the, not the tutorial, but tutorial ways, you know, general stuff. But again, you have to play around with all of, all of these however you want to. So now for the last thing, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And time for text. I only briefly talked about text in the beginning. And because of that, well, you know, um, no, that's actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer right here. There we go. I only really did a text and then I rasterized but I didn't really talk about the text itself so again you click on text and you have the size right over here I'm going to just put um tutorial how about that so again you can always highlight the text you select however you want it and you can change the size of course I'll say 50 you know make it even bigger let's say 80 you then have your you know regular effects like in many word documents bold you can italicize it you can underline it you know you can also do other various effects. For example, the baseline. This doesn't really work for text directly. It's more it's more complicated to talk about that, but I will I guess I'll talk about that in a bit. Kerning, okay. It's the spacing between each letter, but again, because there's not enough room here, I'm gonna have to drag it a bit more. There you go. Um I'll go ahead and put that around right there. Line height. This one confuses me a bit. I'm not too entirely sure on how this works. I mean, if I lower this a bit more, I can probably tell. It's still a bit confusing. I'm not really sure how that works. And uh, then the indent space. This one, I've tried it, but it doesn't really... I mean, I would assume there's something over here. But again, I'm not too familiar with these things because people don't really use these. You can also align them. Let's say center align, right align. You get the idea. What is this one? One of the people that don't even use that much, but I'll just go ahead and center align. How about that? You can also do a stroke. Let's say um, I'll do a stroke of five. You can see the stroke color is set to blue over here. Let's go ahead and use a color that appears more. There you go. And let's go ahead and make it a bit skinnier. How about three? There you go. That works nice. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. You can, of course, change the entire type. Oh, we have to select it, but... Um, let's go ahead and select it to this. See that? You get the idea. This, this is basic word stuff, but again, I just wanted to briefly talk about this in case you weren't very sure on how this part works. But that's pretty much how it works. It's not too complicated. I'll go ahead and switch back to Helvetica and that. And typeface. This is kind of another of these blonde or... Uh, not, what, did I, what did I say? Bold. I don't know how I said blonde. I'm sorry italicize it has these other weird things but again you get the idea it's not too complicated but that's pretty much it on text and of course I talked about gradients and filters so that's uh, part three of acorn four if you like this you know go ahead and like it leave a comment whatever you like uh, I don't mind so next time we're gonna talk about um, creating a YouTube banner goodbye